All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. So uh, this is part two of the Holly Sniper install. And uh, as you can probably tell, we're draining some coolant and we're moving along real nice. Now, I left you guys off with a wiring nightmare. And uh, at this particular moment, things are looking up. So the other night I got in here and I neatened up all the wires on this harness and it looks awesome now. Everything is hidden. I uh, was able to unpin the connector with uh, basically like a little pick. This is not ideal, by the way. So if you guys are trying to unpin your connector, you're definitely going to want to buy the actual uh, tool from Holly. They do sell it. So uh, if you're interested in that and you're not going to use all those extra wires that I was unpinning the other night, uh, be sure and check that out because it, it just helps. I had to do it kind of a harder way. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to wait on a tool and, and looking back at it now, if you're not going to use all those extra outputs and inputs and all those wires, go ahead, get yourself a tool, save yourself some headache and do it the right way. I was able to make it work. Would I recommend doing it? Uh, if you're in a pinch and you're in a hurry, yeah, it works. A small pick will do it. But if you want to take your time and not really scratch or ding up anything in the harness, get the tool. So... We're uh, getting back at it here, and today, basically, I'm draining the coolant, and I'm actually getting ready to put the coolant temp sensor in. If you guys remember, we had a rat's nest of wires over here at one point, and now it is looking a little better. Uh, all the stuff is hidden. I tied in my uh, switched hot wire to the pink. There's actually three wires. you got a red wire coming in from the HyperSpark. A pink from the HyperSpark and a pink from the TBI unit itself. So all those three wires get wound together, put in a connector, and then I fed power to those. So that being said, it should theoretically right now, if I hooked everything up, it, the sniper would actually come on. The unit would, the handheld unit would. So um, that's pretty cool. But, um, you know, right now, basically, I've, I've got to finish getting these little sensors hooked up. I wanted to drain some of this coolant so it doesn't make an absolute mess. So I'm probably going to have to buy some coolant before we start it. But uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to show you guys where we're going to put this sensor at. And you can see the pigtail is hanging out right there for where it's going to go. And I'm actually going to install the sensor right there. And I chose to do it at the back just because there's so many wires and stuff that I really don't want to get... Uh, you know, tangled up and and making it look any worse in the front. So we're going to work on that today. Uh, the other thing we're going to work on today is the O2 sensor, which I've got right here. This guy, the wire is ran down the back of the transmission right now. So I'm going to be raising this thing up, and I don't know if I'm going to get to do it tonight or not, guys. I'm trying to get this done here before shutdown, so we can enjoy this thing and make some content and go rip it up in the mountains. But uh, you know, hopefully tonight we'll get the coolant temp in, get all the fluid drained out. We're going to raise it up, install our uh, O2 sensor today too, and then hopefully tomorrow, I did get that fuel pump I was telling you guys about. By the way, did get the fuel pump. I went with an Excel pump. They do sell them on Holly's website, and I highly recommend it. Uh, basically, the reason I ended up going with an a internal tank pump the external pump that goes on this truck, there is no room on the frame rail at all. I'll show you guys that here in just a little bit. There is no room to mount an external pump, and it makes a mess. So, to avoid all that and to keep the stock fuel filter lines and everything, it'll all work off the key in the ignition, I'm thinking. Um, so, that that's kind of my plan, was just keep everything neat. Now, if you're wondering, no, this truck normally does not set this high. I'm actually using the lift because it's so dirt nasty low, I couldn't even get the uh, pan under it. So, while that's draining, I just wanted to fill you guys in on everything. All the parts are here, so we're going to go ahead and hook that up. And uh, let's get to it, guys. Alright, guys. So, of course, I put some uh, thread tape on the oxygen sensor. Or the oxygen sensor. <laughs> I did put some thread tape on the coolant temp just in case because... Well, you never know. They had some on it, but I would rather be safe than sorry and go ahead and add some. So it actually turned out pretty neat. Uh, of course, it wasn't very hard at all to get the old pot plug out. And this is a three-quarter inch hex, in case you're wondering. And uh, it dropped right in, plugged in. So realistically, guys, we're ready to go underneath. All right, heading under the muscle truck here. This is what we've got to work with. And... Uh, 
Now the, the golden rule, according to the manual here, for the O2 sensors in these trucks is they need to be one to 10 inches past the collector if you have long tubes or if you already have a bung for your uh, header, you know, obviously you'll want to screw the O2 sensor in. In our case, we do not have that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the O2 sensor about, you know, three or four inches back in this area so I can get a drill in here and uh, it should work just fine. I'm gonna use a unibit, drill it out to the size it needs to be, and then we'll clamp our O2 sensor on. I'm gonna go ahead though, mark my location, and I'm gonna get 10 degrees. Now, oh, another thing. You guys need to make sure and mount your O2 sensor 10 degrees past parallel. If you don't, it's gonna cause condensation stuff to build up on it, it'll prematurely uh, kill that sensor, so. All right guys, I wanted to show you this real quick because this is a prime example of why you don't want to weld your exhaust completely up. So, as you can see, I had to disconnect this nice little uh, ball and socket joint here because this pop, I actually rotated it out of the hanger that I made because you can see upright the way it was held was super, you know, tight. Unfortunately, 10 degrees with a drill is way up here. So the drill had no chance of getting in here due to the NV3500 being right there. So since I was able to loosen that and pivot this thing, now I can get my unibit right here to it and drill it nice and straight, perfectly, just like I needed to. If this would have been welded, I would have had to have cut it or done something extremely dumb right here. Instead, I loosened, you know, five bolts and had the whole thing out. So five bolts is all it took to do this. So guys, if you're doing cutouts, if you're doing exhaust work, or you're always working on your car, please do yourself a favor, make you some hangers, and make this thing where you can get it apart. It's just totally worth it. All right guys, safety first as always, but uh, it did the trick. So just to kind of show you guys, I've got the cover on it, but boom, look at that. Now we gotta do is this is our datum. We're gonna rotate it back over and that'll be perfectly at 10 degrees. All right guys, I wanted to show you how neat this little thing is that Holly's developed. So basically you just tighten it up. I've got a little gasket in behind here and uh, basically the O2 is just gonna screw right in here. So I'm just kind of lining this up true to the hole we just drilled. We're gonna tighten this thing down and send it. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you a quick way to get 10 degrees. You can use your phone to do this. It doesn't require any rocket science here. So, I told you guys earlier, what I've done basically is I took a um, socket, stuck it on there, put my phone on it, and I said I want it to be about 10 degrees, you know, roughly. So right now, where I've got this tightened up at, I'm kind of holding the phone here, cheating it. Here we go, let me line it up. So there is roughly center line of that thing. And I'm moving around just breathing, making it move a little bit. But you can see there's about 10, 10 and a half. It's gonna be really close. All right guys, so we're cleaning up some more of this wiring. Of course, it's the next day. And I uh, went ahead and made our coal wire too. So this looks pretty neat. Cutout wires are now hid and the rest of the harness is hid with it. Hooking up the negative and hot post on the terminal. I've done hid the rest of the wires in behind the engine. We've hooked our screen up. So that means we're gonna turn the key on and see what happens. Just, uh, you're gonna film that for the first time then? Well, of course. <laughs> we're gonna I'll see. This is it out and then once I knew everything is all right, come back and turn it on. Uh, we're gonna give the viewers the raw footage here the mess ups the good stuff the bad stuff whatever it is you got a fire extinguisher <laughs> uh -huh, uh, Look at that boys. It's alive It's alive boys Woo All right guys, so we just went through our setup on the sniper and everything did work um I am going to go back and actually after we get the fuel pump on, I'm going to walk through this entire thing with you guys. Basically, all we did was cycle the key. We made sure everything came on and I updated my firmware. And that's one other thing I'm going to show you guys how to do because a lot of these kits out of the box will not have the right software and firmware that you're going to need to drive a HyperSpark. If you don't have a HyperSpark on your Holly system, disregard anything I'm saying right now. But if you do, 
or if you want the software on your laptop, it's definitely worth doing. Now, I do have my laptop in here, and you go to holly.com, and they will actually provide you pretty much everything you need to know to update the firmware. There's videos and how-tos. It's very simple. It's actually not bad at all, and if you're not too savvy with laptops and computers, this is really not that bad. Take your time and learn it. It's it's piece piece of cake to do. So, uh... Now it's finally come time to pull the bed on the truck and drop in the new fuel pump, which is an Excel. And this is that neat little fuel pump I was telling you guys about. That is supposed to drop in the sending unit like a factory. So let me go inside and grab that pump. I'm going to show that to you guys and then we're going to start breaking this thing down and finishing up. It should have eight bolts holding the bed on. We're going to disconnect everything here and uh, disconnect the filler neck from the bed just over here and uh, we'll be ready to pull this bed off guys these bolts are pretty hard to get to guys so you'll definitely want an extension Yeah, I think we're gonna be good to go up now. You ready? Yeah, go ahead and hit it. Looking okay? So far so good, yeah. Go ahead. You good? Yeah. Oh, that's filler neck. Popped loose of its thing, that's all. All right, let's see what this does. Else not at the moment I think we're okay so you guys can see how we're lifting this oh. hold on that's where we got to move the truck forward yeah because we're getting ready to get into the roll pit if we haven't already done it what was that it was up on it just a little bit oh okay did you move the truck yeah there we go it's a little bit nerve-wracking, guys. Just a little bit nerve-wracking. Really cool way to move the bed. And I haven't seen a bed off this truck in literally like six years, so. It's all right. Dang, man. This is crazy. Cool way to lift a bed off. Man, look at this thing. It's so low. I didn't realize how slammed the muscle truck is. Look at how rich it's been running all these years with a carburetor. <laughs> so you tell where we started up, it just leaves like its mark, its territory everywhere it goes because it's so rich. Man, that was a really, okay, now hold on, there's some sketchiness going on in the front. There's a tad bit of sketchiness in the front. Sketch factor here is pretty high. Yeah, let that thing on the lock. As you can see here, the front's not even touching that pad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, it is? Okay. Okay. All right, we're good. I was freaking out a little bit, guys, but no biggie. Bed still looks to be in pretty good shape, and I think it took it like a champ, so... Of course, you got your weight displaced real nice here, but, uh... Yeah. All right. All right, guys, so, uh... Lines are all disconnected, and basically, instead of line wrenches and maybe a crow's foot will help you out here. And uh, we're ready to take this loose. So what you do is you've got this lock tab on here. You just spin it, pops right out. So we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of this out. Of course, WD-40 is gonna be your best friend here too. Uh, a lot of you guys be very careful with these lines because a lot of them are probably gonna have a lot of rust on them if it's a northern truck. It's just one thing to be aware of. So we ready to pull the pump? Have we spun the tab? I don't know if we spun the tab yet or not. And this is how you do it. Kind of work your way around. Now we can go ahead and start taking this old pump out and uh, get the Excel over here. He should drop right in. It should be a uh, direct replacement for this Delphi. And this is the stock pump in this truck with 355,000 miles on it. So GM, you did well. So here's a comparison of the pumps. A little bit of fuel still in that one. And there's stuff falling off. You definitely need Isolator. this. Isolator. Yeah. Um, 
body of them, it looks like it definitely, you know, the body's bigger. Wiring harness is going to change, but they do give you a harness. So you can see the difference right there in the pigtails. Obviously, you're going to have to change it. But that's okay because we have this. And that's going to go right in the place of that little connector. And it looks like we'll have to probably have the rest of the sending unit out to hook this in. Potentially. So we may have to disconnect those wires at the top. But other than that, it is apples for apples. So that is that is awesome. So guys huge thing right here if you're doing sniper and you need 60 psi or for that matter if you're doing an ls swap this will even cover the ls swap because this pump will make 900 horsepower naturally aspirated 60 psi so it's got plenty of power to do what you need to do with it so if you're doing this do not use the external pump that comes outside the tank it's a lot more trouble than it's worth here's why i'm going to show you guys you have no room to mount an external pump anywhere. And the rule of thumb for an external pump is it needs to be at the bottom of the tank or lower than, you know, where your, your tank's at. And there's no there's no room. So this is the how you do it, guys. Spend the extra 150 bucks, buy the Excel pump from Holly, and you've got it done. So even that piece looks like it's gonna work. Cool. All right, guys, we got the new pump going in now. Everything's back installed. We're gonna tighten our lines back down and then drop the bed back onto the frame and uh, go through a learn process and we'll see how it does on the first crank. And hopefully this thing does what it's supposed to do and it learns and everything will be fine. But we're definitely gonna watch the logs and see what happens here. All righty, guys, we got the bed back on. We gotta put some bolts in here for the filler neck. Not really a big deal. And then, uh, of course, we've got to put the bolts back in the bed. We've got them laying over here. So we've got to put those back in and tighten everything down. And that should finish the bed up. And I think we've got to hook our harness back in at the rear. But other than that, it's pretty much done. The only thing left to do in the kit is we have to take out that blue wire, which you can see here. That's what normally would drive your external pump. And for this particular truck, we're not going to use that because... We're using a stock pump, and it's, well, not stock pump, but the stock-ish style pump that took the place of the old one. And uh, I'm going to neaten up this harness. I will be working on that. I will work on a plate to mount the uh, sniper unit. I've got it kind of temporarily rigged up in the cab for now. And uh, I've got to hide a few wires, you know, but this is a lot of work just to get the wires right. So we're going to be working on that this week. I'll have some more uploads for that, but... Uh, Right now, I think it's time to button this thing up and crank it and see what happens. All right, guys, I got my quick start guide, and you know what that means. It's time to fire it up. So we've got our coolant in it, the sensor's in it, the O2's in it, everything's tight, everything's down. Cool's hooked up. We check for leaks. There's no leaks in the fuel system. It's got the new pump in it. All the wires are ran. Plug's hooked up. I think we're ready guys so I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing the first crank and see what she does so this is gonna be a maiden voyage I have no clue what this thing is gonna do guys it I have no clue I'm gonna go ahead and back it up a little bit oh maybe I can all right this truck's heavy bear with me for a second all right guys here we go first crank sniper EFI we this is unscripted so first I'm gonna let it prime and everybody's happy. Okay, so the first thing I gotta do before I try to crank this thing though, guys, we gotta go back and we gotta set this thing up. So we wanna go to the wizard. And the kit we have is four injector 4150. 5116 part number, that's our guy. We got a V8. And our engine displacement is 334 in this particular application. Okay. Target idle speed, I uh, definitely want to set this kind of in the thousand-ish range. It's flat tap it, you know, hydraulic flat tap it, so. That's kind of cool. Keypad editor, why not? Thousand. Okay. Target idle speed is a thousand RPMs. Should be nice. We can adjust this later. So, target idle speed. Next. We have a street strip cam in here. This is not anything too insane, so I'm gonna hit next. Let's go back. 
camp top street strip. No nitrous. And we have the Holly Hopper Spark distributor. So we're going to pick this uh, option. And wide open throttle ignition timing. 30 degrees. What do you think, man? About 30 degrees on the timing? All right, we'll sit. We'll go. What do you think about thirty-one? Split it. It don't matter, man. We can get that later. Okay, we'll say thirty-one. Okay, here he goes. Please cycle the ignition to complete operation. Okay, boys, here we go. Turn him off. All right, here we go. All right, so it stalled. Wrong. All right, guys, so what we did wrong was on me, actually. I had one and seven backwards somehow. I had everything in a loom real tight, so no biggie. Let's try this again. Now what's going on? Okay. So we're back here on this screen. Ready to crank? All right, here goes nothing. Let's see what she does. All right, she's rattling right at a thousand. She's hunting, it's hunting. She's on the hunt, boys. All right, she's a learning. She's a learning. Uh, come on, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. All right, guys. So what we quickly discovered is uh, started getting a lot of heat back here in a couple of these cylinders, and it got up to 160, and everything's everything's working. So what we had to do actually is we're gonna have to adjust the timing. So I set the static timing at 15 degrees. And now that we've set our static timing, we're gonna verify it with a key crank here. So let's see if she's happy, happy, happy. Hold on, I'm gonna let it boot up. Duper, duper, duper. All right, ready? Here we go. one thing they don't really mention in the directions but as you do this as soon as this thing cranks guys set that static timing at 15 and then verify it out here if you don't you're gonna do what we did and start to notice things getting a little hot so should be okay though it's not not the end of the world here what are we getting on the timing We're at 15 now. We're at 15, all right. So hopefully. Now, what you're saying in there, you still 15 on the back? Yeah, I'm, I'm set at 15 in here on static timing. So we can go back here. We've already set our static timing, so we know what it should be at. So we should be okay. Coolant temp sensor is 166, and she is learning, boys, learning. So, I think at this point, you know, we're going to kind of watch these gauges and make sure it's happy and uh, maybe go for a drive. I know this is a really lengthy upload as far as just the initial startup, but guys, there's so much that goes into this thing and you, you want to make sure it's right when you do this first crank. Do not screw this up. Ugh, I think we're good. So, we'll, let's pick it back up on a road trip here and uh, we'll see how it does.